what is the expectation about the way that we study and then what is the reality or what should the reality be, okay? I want to start off with the expectation because in a lot of cases, students aren't consciously thinking about um, what process they're following or they're not, not really consciously thinking about what they're expecting, they just study. There's a lot of habits involved, um, you know, stuff that's always worked before, uh, you know, I've always done it this way, so, you know, don't fix what's not broken, um, and how we think we're supposed to learn or understanding of what learning is. And in some cases, that's, you know, actually not, you know, actually not necessarily true. So I want to highlight from my experience of students, what the expectation generally is, what the unsaid expectation is. And what this, the importance of this is that it affects how you study every day. Okay, so students are like, well, Yvonne, you know, I, I want to focus on the content. You know, I want to get through the syllabus and this warm, fuzzy stuff that you talk about is not really that important. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not really that interested in it at the moment. I really want to talk about this because um, this impacts how you study every day, whether you study every day and what exactly it is you do when you sit down at your desk. Okay, and obviously I'm talking about how do you prepare for that exam? You know, what happens in your head? What happens in your process? How are you preparing for the exam? So let's talk about the expectation. Let's move that all the way up. What's the expectation? The expectation is that we learn the material. Okay, so the expectation is that we go through the content, topic by topic, you know, for, for the syllabus, chapter by chapter, content by content. We, we kind of feel like we need to know what we're doing. We want to be, I put these in inverted commas because these are the phrases that we use. We want to be comfortable with the knowledge. We want to feel confident with our knowledge. Um, we want to know enough. So these are phrases that I, I hear a lot from students. You know, when I'm learning material, uh, my material, I want to understand, I want to know, I want to be comfortable with the content, I want to feel confident, I want to know enough about it. Um, and once we've learnt our material, um, at the end, we do questions. Okay? And without consciously being aware of it, our assessment or our understanding of what questions are for, when I talk to students and I unpack what do you feel the purpose of questions are for, I get it's to evaluate knowledge, right? Do I know enough? Um, you know, do I know enough? Am I, you know, am I comfortable with the stuff? Do I know enough? Um, am, I, am I ready for the exam? So this is kind of, you know, to some, to some extent or to, you know, 95% of students I speak to, this is what comes out of their discussion of, of questions is, um, you know, am I ready for the exam? Do I know enough? You know, per questions are to, to evaluate my knowledge. So this seems very logical. So there's, you know, it, it seems like, well, you know, Yvonne, what else? What else are we supposed to say here? It seems logical. But let me explain to you, you know, what, what you're not really thinking about or what you're not, you know, what you're consciously or subconsciously avoiding. So what we think is that if we get this right, you know, if we get this right, if we know our stuff, if we're comfortable, if we know enough, if we're confident enough, then we feel that by the time we hit questions, we're going to pass. Okay? So that's how we feel things are going to go. If you know your material well enough, if you've studied it enough, then you're going to pass questions. So you study, 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 do your summaries, do your revision, etc., etc. Do question number one and you're going to pass it. If you fail the question, right? So students kind of say, well, if I fail the question, it's because I didn't do step one properly. So therefore, I need to go back to learn the material uh, to know, you know, obviously I don't know enough, I'm not comfortable, and then obviously, you know, that drops your confidence a lot as well, so you go, I don't know my material well enough, I don't know the stuff, no, 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 and then they go back and they learn their material, then they'll go back to questions, they go, okay, if I've learned my material properly, then I will pass the question, if I fail the question, then clearly I don't know my material well enough, and I need to go back, 
Okay, so there's there's the cycle of um, you know evaluating your knowledge and then going back and gathering more knowledge, if you will. And again, there's a certain amount of logic to this. All this seems you know this seems fairly logical, but it's it's actually it's actually not. <laughs> Okay, so what students avoid as far as possible and what, you know, most of my students are avoiding like the plague is this particular step, right? I don't want to fail, okay? Don't want to fail. By all costs, when I'm studying, when I do, I need to do enough of this so that I go straight here. I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail the question. If I fail the question, it means I didn't learn enough, I didn't study enough, and so therefore I haven't done my job properly. So students avoid doing questions for as long as possible while they study because they're trying to avoid the step. I don't want to fail because it's indication, don't know my stuff enough, I don't, you know, don't understand it, I'm not confident, etc, etc. So they avoid questions because they want to avoid that step, want to avoid that step. One of the biggest problems I have with this and the reason that I emphasize this so much is because of a very real limitation that you have, which is time. So students are forever telling me, I don't finish the syllabus on time. I'm not getting through my studies. I'm not getting through my stuff. How do I fix my time management? Because the cycle just takes up too much time and they're still not passing questions. In most cases, they're not getting to questions because they haven't got to a point yet where they feel like they know enough that they will pass a question. Question. So like, I'm not going to attempt a question if I know that I'm not going to pass it, then I'm just going to hang around in here until I've done enough, 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 and then I feel, okay, now I'm ready to pass a question, then they'll do a question. So that's our expectation. Let's talk about the reality. The reality of exams, um, the first thing that uh, I want to talk about, or the first thing that I want to say is that writing exams are more like push-ups then we realize <laughs> it's a really silly example but it makes sense okay so if i say to you you know there's a lot of theory about how to do push-ups um you know you need to know uh, the posture, the correct posture, how to breathe, for example, you know, the right shoes to wear, the right equipment, the floor, uh, you know, all of that stuff. Like you can know an enormous amount of theory about how to do the perfect push-up. Is that going to change how your first push-up goes, right? So you can spend three weeks uh, researching how to do the most perfect push-up. Is that going to change how that first push-up goes? Your first set of push-ups that you do, when you get on the floor, they're going to suck, right? Because your muscles haven't developed yet, you, you, you haven't practiced those movements, um, you haven't developed the strength yet. The only way that you're going to increase and improve your push-ups is by actually doing them, okay? Why? Because when it comes to push-up, the outcome is practical, so if I say to you, you know, you need to be able to do 50 push-ups in a row, the outcome is practical. You know, you have to do something with it. The knowledge of how to do push-ups is not going to, uh, you know, is not going to impact the practical ability to do 50 push-ups in a row. It's valuable and it does add value and you do need to know how to do a push-up. But the most important thing you can do to do a push-up is get on the floor and get going. Okay. Now, if we use that and we say, okay, Von, well, you know, what does that mean for my studying? Your studying is the same, right? Your studying is a bunch of theory, you know, and, and your knowledge and your understanding and all of that. But what you're working towards is the ability to do questions because that's what the exam is, right? The exam is a bunch of questions. You need to be able to do questions. So the outcome, again, is practical. There are processes that you need to follow, there's stuff you need to practice, and your brain is a muscle, right? And the process that you use in your questions, et cetera, et cetera, this is like building muscle memory. So as much theory as you have, as much theory as you develop, it doesn't necessarily translate into being able to do a question perfectly the first time that we do it. Part of our learning, part of our studying is the question of, you know, do I understand what I'm doing or do I know my stuff to some extent? But more importantly, what am I going to do with the knowledge that I have? And do I know how to do it? Do I understand it? Have I worked on it? Have I practiced it? These two go hand in hand. So what is the reality? The reality is that you're going to learn stuff. However, that is, you know, that you learn. 
summaries, revisions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you're going to do questions. But here's what here's what you you're not consciously thinking of, or here's what you're not really aware of. Question number one, you're going to fail. Okay. Um, generally, you're looking at about fifteen to twenty percent. You're going to fail it. That's it. End of story. Okay. Question number two. When you do question number two, you're probably still going to fail it. Like 90% of the time, you're going to fail it. And you're probably then looking somewhere between 20 to 30%. Oops. Okay. So on average, your improvement, I would say, is about, you know, plus minus 5 to 10% between, between questions. Okay, you're going to fail the question. Now, what we think, as I said, with your, you know, with your expectation is that if you do enough of the learning, then you can avoid the failing. I'm here to tell you that no matter how much time you spend on your learning, you're still going to fail. Okay, so I call this step one. Step one, you're going to fail a question. When you do that first question, you're going to fail it. Very much the same as when you get on the floor and you do those very first set of push-ups, you're going to suck at it. Okay, it's not going to go as well as you'd like it to go. You can go home tonight and do you know, more theory and, and more like how do I do it better and how do I stand and how do I sit and what's my posture and, 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 and. But that's not going to change the fact that when you do those first set of push-ups, you may be able to squeeze out five and that's it, right? That's not going to change. It doesn't matter how much time you've spent on learning your stuff, your theory versus your doing is very, very different. It requires different skills. It requires practice. It's not the same thing, right? So the theory, the understanding of all the concepts that go into it doesn't automatically translate into marks. We think that theory equals marks. You know, if I know more theory, I will get more marks. You're missing the step that says you have to practice how to use it, okay? How do you use it? And there's a whole bunch of things in there that's going to impact um, you know, that's going to make like life difficult when you look at a question. Where do you start? What's your time limitations? What do you do? How do you, you know, what's your structure? What's your process, etc., etc. So it's always going to be that way, okay? So step one is going to be that you fail the question. Generally, what you do then is you're going to go back and you're going to revise or you're going to learn some stuff and, you know, you're going to go, okay, what don't I know, etc., etc. And then you're going to go back to do another question and then you're going to hit step two, which is, fail another question but you'll see that you've improved a little bit okay so you've improved by like five to ten percent which is great so step two is fail the question 20 to 30 percent and then you go oh well you know i'm still struggling with some stuff so let me go back and i'm going to learn some more stuff and then i'm going to go and do question three you're probably still going to fail question three and you're probably now looking at about 30 to 40 percent Okay, so step three is fail another question, but you'll notice that you are improving. You'll notice that you're now sitting with another 10%. So every time you go back and you pick up some more skills and you practice the stuff, there is improvement. And this word is important because we, we generally don't acknowledge improvement. Okay, we see things as fail and pass. Okay, so we see it's either one or the other. You know, you either fail or you pass. What's really, really, really important here is that in between failing and passing is a little concept called improvement. Okay, you fail and then you improve and then you pass. We don't see it that way. We just go fail, fail must pass, must pass, must pass, must pass. So the idea that you might fail three questions for you is like, well, no, that's just stupid. Clearly, I don't know enough. Um, I can't do another question until I'm ready to pass. It's completely pointless. I'm wasting my time. Uh, I'm not passing and therefore I know nothing. When in reality, you can see that there is an improvement. Improve. You're improving. Slowly but surely, you're improving, right? So by the time you get to step four, you're now probably saying, okay, you know, I've done a little bit more, you know. You might actually end up on. Oh, what is a pale? <laughs> you might actually end up passing because you're now sitting, you know, with your improvements, you're now sitting at about 40, you know, 40 to 50 percent because you've practiced the stuff, because you've gone through it, because you've worked through it a few times and you've slowly started improving and, you, you know, you're improving what you're doing. And so therefore, you're, you know, you're in a position to finally start passing. So the 
the important thing here, the, the most important thing I want you to get out of this is that step one is inevitable. It's unavoidable. It is going to happen. I don't care how much time you spend on that learning step. I don't care how much time you spend learning and theory. Step one is that you will fail a question. Just like knowing how to do the perfect push-up doesn't make doing that first push-up easier. It still is going to be something that you struggle with until you build up the strength. Okay? And the value, where does the improvement come from? What causes the improvement? Most of the improvement comes from this process, comes from the doing process, from doing, learning, stretching, figuring out, building the skills. Most of your improvement comes from doing the questions. This is now the second time that I'm doing the questions, so I have a little bit of a better idea of what they're asking. I understand a little bit of what they're looking for. I've gone through the process before, so I'm a little bit more comfortable. By the time you're doing the fourth question, you're like, okay, I know how this works. I kind of understand where to start. I'm doing things a little bit faster. I can write a little faster. I understand what, you know, what mistakes I've made in the past. Your improvement comes from the practicing, not so much from the learning. Okay, so I want to highlight again, and I'm going to say it again and again and again. Step one is inevitable. Now, here's what happens, right? Here's what students generally do. And they go, Yvonne, I don't understand why this isn't working. So let's say this is a timeline, and you're writing your exam over here. Okay, and you start your studying over here. You start your semester over here. Okay, so what students tend to do is they start over here and they learn all the way over here. Okay, so they learn, 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 um, and then somewhere around here they start doing questions. Okay, so if you didn't do any questions because you ran out of time because you were learning so much, then step one is going to happen on exam day. And this is why you fail your exam, because you haven't actually gone through step one yet, right? If you started, um, let's do a different color. If you did your learning, 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 and you started questions over here, then step one is going to happen over here. So you're going to get, you know, 15 to 20% over here. And then the exam will be step two. So you'll land up with like between 20 to 30%. Okay. If you learn, 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 and you start a little earlier and you start step one, you know, three, three weeks before the exam, then you're going to do step two. So that's your uh, 15 to 20, that's your 20 to 30, and then step three is in the exam. Because remember, your, your, your exam is a question, right? I hope you can see the trend here. If you are, I'm going to use pink because I like pink. If you start much earlier, step one, 15 to 20, and step two, step three, step four, you can see now, you know, if you're sitting in the exam and you're on step four, you can see the difference. Your improvement is cumulative, right? It is cumulative. It adds up. So you kind of go, oh, you want, you know, improving my question by 10% is not enough. You know, I need to go from 20% to 30%. But it's one hang of a lot easier if you start this process earlier. We think that we need to extend this period so that this doesn't happen. We genuinely think, most of our students genuinely think that somehow they can bypass all of that and go straight to step four in the exam. I don't have to do all of that, you know. In the exam, I can just pass. Or, you know, if I'm doing, if I'm doing my first question, you know, the, 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 the week before the exam, then, you know, somehow if I've spent a lot of time on this, um, somehow I can avoid that, right? So what most students spend their time doing is utterly, absolutely, totally doing everything they can to avoid step one. You know, Yvonne, like, I just, I don't want to fail the question. So you're avoiding step one. What you're not aware of, and again, what I'm emphasizing is step one is inevitable. It will happen. It will happen. Not because there's something wrong with your studying, not because there's something wrong with the way that you learn, not because you don't know what you're doing, not because of anything other than the fact that it is a given, normal, expected, required part of studying. Part of learning is starting off by not knowing what you're doing and then slowly building the skill. That's it. That's as simple as it is.
The, the smart money is on starting this process as early as possible. I want you to fail a question. I want you to do step one as early in the semester and the year as possible so that you can get that out the way. Start working on that. Start doing that. It's, it's a really simple formula if you look at it this way, right? The sooner that you can get to that, the better. You don't have to know the entire syllabus in order to get 15%, right? So we think, well, Ivana, I haven't finished the syllabus, so I'm not ready to do questions yet. But that's not, that's not what causes our improvement. The learning and the theory isn't what creates the most improvement. What creates the improvement is doing the questions. Just the same as what creates the ability to do more push-ups is actually getting on the floor and doing them. Day after day, you do a few more. Every day, you're able to do one or two more, just one or two more, just one or two more. And it doesn't feel like a lot, and it feels slow, and it feels painful. You kind of go back and you go, I should do it a little bit better, etc., etc. But the only thing that's going to change your ability to do 50 push-ups is by every day doing a few more push-ups. Okay? Yes, knowing how to do push-ups better is good. It's handy, it's helpful, and it is going to help you, but that's not where the improvement comes from. I want you to, to understand this. I want you to realize that your expectation that you can avoid step one by learning more. I want you to understand that that is complete rubbish. You cannot avoid it. If you avoid it while you're studying, it's going to hit you in the exam. Okay? The reality, start step one ASAP. The sooner that you can do step one, the sooner that you can get over it, get past it, move on and start improving. And if I say to you, I'm really struggling to do 50 push-ups, and you say to me, Yvonne, you know, how many push-ups are you doing at the moment? And I go, I'm not doing any because I can't do 50. What are you gonna say to me? Well, Yvonne, the only way you're gonna get to 50 is if you get on the floor and start doing push-ups. And if next week I come back to you and I go, I still can't do 50 push-ups, and you go, oh, shame, that's horrible. Um, you know, like, how many can you do? Oh, no, I haven't done any more because I tried to do, you know, I tried to do 50 last week and I, I, I didn't do it. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm going, you know, I'm going through YouTube videos of how to do the perfect push-up. You're going to laugh at me. And you're going to say to me, well, Yvonne, the only way you're going to be able to build up to 50 push-ups is if you get going. You've got to start somewhere and just slowly build up. It's that improvement. You've got to work on the improvement. So this, I want you to draw a little timeline for yourself. I want you to, to look at that and go, you know, the sooner I start with step one, the sooner I can get to step five, you know, four, five, six. You can imagine where you are by, you know, by, by step six and seven. So step one, start it as soon as possible. You cannot avoid it. You cannot get around it. It is going to happen. It's going to hit you. It is a fact of life. As a lecturer, I expect that you will fail the first question. Perhaps that's not something that lecturers say enough. You know, perhaps we as lecturers don't really emphasize the fact that learning starts off by sucking at it. <laughs> you know, perhaps we don't emphasize enough that I expect that you're going to fail questions. I want you to fail questions. That's where you start because you're starting with imperfect knowledge. Obviously, that's the part of the journey. So maybe as a lecturer, we need to emphasize more. I want you to fail that question. Fail it and fail it quickly. You know, get it out the way, get to step one, you know, get step one out the way as fast as possible so that you can get to step two, step three, step four, step five. You can't go from learning to step five. You know, it, it, it doesn't work. There's no such thing. Okay. It doesn't work. You don't go from learning into the exam and then, you know, get your 50%. It's not, it's not how life works. It doesn't work that way. Just the same as you don't go from saying, I've never done a push-up in my life before, I want to do 50 push-ups and therefore I'm going to do 50 push-ups now because I am just that impressive. <laughs> you know, no matter how fa fa fabulous you are, no matter how amazing you are, no matter how wonderful you are, it's not going to happen. It, it's, it's a fact of life. It doesn't make you silly, it doesn't make you stupid, it doesn't make you weak, it doesn't make you fail, it doesn't make you anything other than aware of the facts of life. So, start step one ASAP.